For officially licensed Canadian Railway apparel and souvenirs, be sure to visit casualtiesapparel.com. They have hundreds of fully licensed high-quality railway items for train enthusiasts of all ages, such as caps, shirts, mugs and jackets to name a few. If you are looking for a high-quality t-shirt of your favorite railway, or a Canadian Railway water bottle to stay hydrated when trackside, you will definitely want to check out Casualty's website at www.casualtiesapparel.com. For the past 30 years, the C40-8M has been hauling trains across the CN system. These locomotives were a unique Canadian twist on the common Dash 8 series from General Electric that started in 1987 to replace the older Dash 7 model. The Dash 840-CM, as the units were also called, were the first Dash 8 locomotives to be purchased by Canadian National. On account of their uniquely Canadian design, the C40-8Ms quickly became a subject for rail fan photography. They would be seen on camera countless times throughout their career. The locomotives had a fully enclosed cowl body. Theoretically, this design would be to the benefit of the crews so they could walk from the cab to the rear of the unit while inside away from the cold winter weather of Canada. These GE cowls were best liked by crews for their spacious cab and good heater in the winter. They were also light enough to operate trains on subdivisions with lighter rail and fairly tight curves. If they were in good repair, the C40-8Ms could hold their own hauling heavy trains on grades and made decent pushers as a result. According to those who worked on the engines for long periods of time, the bad began to outweigh the good. This would lead CN to start ridding themselves of the last cowls in service. Those that are left are only running out the clock, postponing their inevitable fate with the scrapper's torch. The Dash 8s may be the last cowls in active service on CN, but they were not the first. The story began almost 40 years ago with 20 Bombardier MLW built HR 616 units in 1982. These locomotives were dubbed Draper Tapers due to the indented panels behind the cab for better reversing visibility. This Canadian characteristic was named after its designer, William Draper, and was a trait that would become a defining feature for all future variants of CN Cowl. The 
The story continued with the SD50 and SD60Fs built by EMD between 1984 and 1989. These units put a GMD twist on the MLW cowl design. The SD50F differed slightly from the SD60F, with the most noticeable difference being the marker lights and ditch lights. The SD50s had ditch lights mounted under the anti-climber and featured the CN marker light triangle similar to the GMD wide cabs. While the SD60s had markers in a linear pattern on the nose and deck mounted ditch lights. Finally, the C40-8Ms came into the picture between 1990 and 1994, with a total of 55 units produced for CN and another 26 built for BC Rail, later added to CN's roster. The beginning of the end for the cowl came in 1996 when the HR-616 started a rather early retirement after only a decade in service. All 20 of these striped draper tapers were gone off the CN system by 1998 due to massive unreliability. This was ironic because the HR in the name stood for high reliability, a statement all crews operating the 616s strongly disagreed with. The next to go were the EMD SD50Fs, which were fully retired by 2008. Outlasting their MLW predecessors by 10 years, the SD50Fs still had many problems of their own, such as frequent crankshaft failures. Some CN train crews said that if you had an SD50F on your train, you were practically guaranteed to have problems. Though more reliable than the older SD50s, the SD60Fs were not void of issues. The units were said to be loud inside the cab, especially at speed. The cab also became very hot and uncomfortable in the summer due to lack of air conditioning and poor window air circulation. That being said, the units made great pushers as they were powerful and responded well in multiple unit consists. The cab heater was said to be unmatched by any other locomotives on CN at the time. Some SD60Fs were even leased to other roads, most often in the US, and were recommended to them as pushers. For a brief period in 2016, the SD60s were placed in storage along with a few of their GE-built cousins. The SD60F's days were numbered, however, as 2017 marked the demise of CN's last EMD cowls. Many were stored in yards as they awaited to be hauled away for scrap. The majority of SD50 and SD60Fs were eventually turned into park railings and pop cans. However, a few survived the cutting torch and were given a second chance. The Dakota, Missouri Valley and Western, or DMVW, that operates mostly in North Dakota, purchased five SD50Fs and three SD60Fs off of CN. Initially, the noodle logos were patched out and the DMVW reporting mark was placed on the sides of the cab under the road number. This is a quick and temporary solution when rail lines purchase second-hand equipment but can't always repaint it right away. As time went on, these few SD50 and SD60Fs were slowly repainted into the orange, gray, and black of the DMVW. All the XCN cowls on the Dakota, Missouri Valley and Western still retained their old CN road numbers.
5544 was the last SD60F left in the old CN Sergeant Stripe paint scheme. It was repainted in the DMVW colors sometime between April and July of 2020. Currently, these eight GMD cowls can still be seen in operation. Even if not in their original paint, the DMVW colors do complement the engines well and add to their history. Surpassing their older cousins in performance and reliability, the C40-8Ms became the sole remaining cowl on Canadian National. Much like other CN diesels from the 80s and 90s, they also became a quest for railfan photography. CN received two orders of GE cowls. The first were 2400 to 2429, often dubbed Phase 1s by rail fans. Identifiable by a cab mounted bell and linear tri colored class lights on the nose, the Phase 1 cowls were also the last engines on CN delivered in the famous Sergeant Stripe paint scheme, bearing the red, orange, gray, and black colors associated with the railway. The second order of GE Draper tapers were 2430 to 2454. Unofficially named Phase 2s by rail fans, these engines had no cab mounted bell, and the class lights were now twin lens. The Phase 2s were also one of the first locomotives delivered to the railway in the CN North America livery, which would end up being short-lived. Canadian National wasn't the only road to operate these unique Canadian Dash 8s. BC Rail had purchased 26 from GE between 1990 and 1993. In 2004, CN took over BC Rail, and their cowls were now workhorses of Canadian National. eye-catching stripes of red, white, and blue, and the signature BC Rail rock lights and ditch lights on the front. Many rail fans now had a new favorite engine on the CN roster. Everywhere they went, train enthusiasts followed, hoping to get that perfect shot. Some of the BC Rail Dash 8s would make their way down into the United States mainly working on CN's U.S. divisions. Occasionally, one or two would be temporarily traded as foreign power to another railway. A handful of BC Draper tapers were repainted into CN, but still retained the BCOL reporting mark on the side of the cab. Most stayed in the livery of the fallen flag.
these GE giants are aging. Their numerous years of freight service have taken a toll on the engines. The weight of the fuel tank and the prime mover have proven too much for the locomotives to handle, causing the frame of many GE cowls to bow downward in the center. Uncomfortable desktop controls, combined with a tendency to leak exhaust fumes into the cab, and a very rough ride thanks to the short wheelbase has led many employees to loathe assignments on trains with a cowl leader. Recent operating software updates have severely lowered their loading efficiency, so they often take a long time to gear up when the engineer adjusts the throttle. The Dash 840CM still made good pushers, however, and continued to work in other spots in consists as time progressed. Some even set out as mid-train DPUs. Their lack of positive train control meant the locomotives are now unable to lead in the U.S. In Canada, crews prefer them as pushers, but some still take the lead position in lash-ups. In 2019, Canadian National announced their plans to begin the retirement of these Canadian classics. A rude awakening for rail fans, as shortly after, CN started placing all cowls in storage. Sightings became rare, and it seemed the end was closing in fast. The units made one last hurrah as they were called upon during a power shortage in early 2020. However, this would not be a full second chance. Spotted later that year, strings of GE cowls were seen dead in tow behind the Jeebos scheduled to replace them. The spray-painted S on the fuel tanks confirmed rail fans' fears. These cowls were not coming back. These funeral trains were becoming more and more frequent and longer and longer as they marked the end of an era. Seen with the cowls were other Dash 8s such as the Blue Devils and occasional ex Santa Fe CWs. Boarded up stacks, missing components and an ominous lack of any noise was how these Dash 8s were observed as they marched off to the scrap heap. After 30 years in service, in a matter of months, many Dash 8s became mere memories shared by those fortunate enough to witness them firsthand. The scrapyards were filled with mixed feelings, good business and profit for the railway and the scrap companies, but a barren graveyard to train enthusiasts, nothing but the empty husk of a locomotive adored by so many.
All is not yet lost for the cowl. Though more than half of the once plentiful GEs have been lost to history, a handful remain serviceable on CN's roster, as backup engines mainly called upon during rapid freight increases. Hopefully one of these Draper tapers will be saved and added to the collection of a rail museum. Upon its shoulders will sit the legacy of the CN cowl, from the engine's roots in the HR616s to the stylish GMDs, and finally the long-lived GE workhorses. It will be an example of history that rail fans of all future generations would enjoy, remembering the days of the Draper Taper. If nothing else, they will still be remembered through photographs and film captured by the many rail fans that adore the units. A bittersweet thing to experience the era that is the CN Cowell's final chapter.